two years ago, I was very, very honoured and privileged to uh, get invited to a what they call a test screening by my dear old mate Paul, who I'm privileged to know really by doing this show as it happens, and and, I, and it was fantastic. Uh, and and now it's it's done. The the baby has been born, Paul. Finally. Can you tell us just a little bit uh, for a minute or two what what the film is essentially about? Essentially, uh, it's about the history of Formula One. It basically charts the whole uh, history from 1950 to the current day. But we focus on um, the evolution of the safety um, through the years and basically focus on the, the probably what was the deadliest decade between 68 and 78. Lots of crashes. Lots, Yeah, lots of fatalities and unnecessary fatalities. And uh, so the, the film sort of takes a great look at what we call the golden era. I mean, mm. for me, I don't know if you remember, but... Uh, those guys were like who you wanted to be when you grew up as a kid you wanted to be James Hunt yeah. you know you wanted to be Francois Sabir you wanted to be they were all very good looking and they had long hair and big long sideburns long hair and sideburns they and they had girls in their they arms and there were girls. stories of them partying all the time they're driving fast cars so you know that was the era that captured my imagination mm. and, and mine yeah, I mean, I was more of a footy fan for sure, but it was it, it, um, you couldn't get away from it in England, and um, it was a really a incredible. It's an incredible story because it didn't take one man. It wasn't one man's effort. Right, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to put this right. It was everybody's effort. It took efforts from the drivers of the '60s, and uh, Sir Jackie Stewart was really the big champion in the '60s, and then he, you know, the mantle was taken over from him by. Uh, people like Emerson Fittipaldi and then Nicky Lauda and Nigel Mansell and so on and so on. Everyone's been very much involved in trying to make the sport safer because the attitude back in the day was if you think it's too fast, slow down. And that was it. That was basically the protection. There was no one... That, Which that, you couldn't do because the no. machinery was getting faster and exactly, faster. Exactly, because yeah. in 68 the engines doubled in size, <coughs> the sponsorship came in, aerodynamics came in, so the cars were going twice as fast and nothing else had changed. And the, the circuits would have to pay the TV people to come in. And if they had to make it safer, they'd have to pay for it. There was no governing body to say, no, we're going to protect our drivers. And the drivers need protecting from themselves because a driver will drive the mm, fastest what car. what they do. I'll drive. The, is that car dangerous? Yeah, I'll drive it. I don't. It's the fastest yeah. one. I'll drive the fastest one. Uh, it's really because I mean. So basically, really, the film centres around the golden age of motor racing, which is the seventies. And of course, as you say, one of the reasons why a lot of us revere that age is because it was absolutely mental, and there it were a lot crazy. of crashes. And we've we've actually got a little clip yes. uh, from the film, which you've really generously allowed us to run. Uh, which absolutely epitomises, I think, one of the most famous crashes of of that time. And I think we're going to run it right now. In 1976, the defending champion and points leader Nicky Lauda called on his union to boycott the Nürburgring, citing unsafe track conditions. They couldn't marshal it. It would take an army of firefighters to do any good. It will be your decision if the race will continue. Hunt cast his vote to race. Lauda was defeated by the slimmest of margins. One. He was sideways in the middle of the track. His car was on fire. There's Brett Lunger getting out of the 30s and into the flames. The Ferrari had different belts and different systems. Art Mazzaria had driven a Ferrari. He was able to get in, undo the belts. I was on top of the car, and I grabbed Nicky's shoulders and pulled him out of the car. Lauda has finally dragged clear from the burning inferno. The race, of course, is stopped. I remember him saying to me, what's my face like? What's my face like? In fact, we didn't know he had ingested a lot of toxic fumes from the burning resin and fiberglass of the bodywork of the car. People were already talking about him in the past tense. We were both certain that when we turned the radio on, we'd hear the morning news saying he was dead. I think round of applause for that. That is stunning. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Tell, tell you what, I mean, I, I, I've, you know, I'm sure it's changed immeasurably since I saw the test screening. But one, one of the things that caught me when I saw it, even even that, was that you have 
a some incredible archive footage in there and secondly some stunning motor racing people in there paul yeah we were that's uh, one of the things that i think that sets us apart from other um motor racing documentaries of this uh, ilk is that we were able and largely due to the fact that we had support from formula one management and bernie eccleston um, able to get to all these people and um, we do have an incredible list of uh, drivers mechanics wives designers sons fans girlfriends you know everybody is uh, that was around and witnessed this stuff and had something to do with it um, as you saw there brett lunger who was the first guy to come around and he actually hits nicky mm. and then he pulls him out the car um you know we were able to get him for, for an interview and um we got Nicky Lauder to do an interview for us as well. Um, that was very fun trying to get him. Uh, it was a, I'll tell you some of that story off air, but it's, uh, it was exciting. Sorry, guys. We, that, that, that's for us, <laughs> don't not stand for you. Time. Sorry. But, um, yeah, that, I mean, that's what we're most proud of. You know, Dr. Sid Watkins, we have Max Mosley. He's sadly Nicholson. no longer with us, of course. Uh, we Sid, lost Dr. Sid, and my biggest regret is that he passed before we got the film to him, mm. before we got him to see it. Um, which is a real shame because he really was instrumental and the man that you know, changed it between him, Bernie Max and him, the three of them. I mean, it was Sid's ideas, Bernie's uh, pushing to implement it, and then Max Mosley's position at the FIA to actually willing to do these changes and take it on the scientific level that really made the difference. And the biggest uh, thing that we all have to understand and what's most important is that we all um, benefit from this. We all benefit in our cars today. Our cars are safer on the roads because of the technologies that mm. Formula One motor cars have, uh, have have developed, and so we're you know there's like as, as Max says in our film you know thirty thousand people get killed every day on the roads, so if you can make a one percent difference, that's thirty people a day, yeah. that's thirty lives a day yeah. you're saving, and you know that alone justifies everything that's happened. 